Among the monsters said to roam the world's desolate deserts and dense jungles, perhaps none is more feared than the bloodthirsty chupacabra. It's a mysterious vampire beast of mythical proportions, right up there with the Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, and the Abominable Snowman. It's the Chupacabra. Everyone knows the name, but no one knows where they live or what they look like. You see, the legend of this vicious monster is as elusive as the beast itself. To some people, it's a joke. To many people, it's a very real creature. Ben Radford is a creature hunter of sorts. He's researched Bigfoot, lake monsters, aliens, and ghosts. Now, he's taking on the Chupacabra. Radford is managing editor of a science journal, The Skeptical Inquirer. He is known internationally for his science-based investigations. Now, after a five-year search, Radford has uncovered the secret of the Chupacabra. Did your grandfather tell you the story about Chupacabra when you were a little kid? My grandfather didn't tell me that story. In fact, he couldn't have because the Chupacabra is only, uh, only dates back to 1995. According to Radford, the entire Chupacabra phenomena, the monster, the books, documentaries, the whole legend was created just 16 years ago from a single confused incident on a sun-drenched Caribbean island. Mark your calendar. It was the second week of August, 1995. I can tell you exactly where the legend was born. It was born in the suburb of Canovanas, outside of uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. It all traced back to one woman named Madeline Tolentino who saw this, this bizarre creature outside her house. Canovanas is a Puerto Rican community about the size of Farmington. During the week of August 7, 1995, on this residential street, a housewife named Madeline Tolentino spied something out of this world. She saw this weird thing. It was about three to five feet high, had spikes down the back, had either black or red eyes, sort of alien-like. Um, and she saw it for, for a few minutes and it scattered off into the, uh, into the woods. And from that point, the chupacabra was born. The creature she described looked something like this. It had three fingers, grayish skin, and skipped like a kangaroo but had no tail. The local newspaper dubbed the beast El Chupacabra. Never mind, in 1995, there was no such thing as a monster called a chupacabra. You see, back then, the name referred to a nocturnal bird called a whippoorwill, which some believe sucked milk out of goats. However, once the tabloids got a hold of Madeline Tolentino's beast, there was no stopping the story of a bloodthirsty menace on a rampage. Did Madeline spot an alien critter that night? No one had reported seeing this creature before. But hold on, we have seen it before. Madeline Tolentino's chupacabra bears an eerie resemblance to this Hollywood image. Meet Sill, the terrifying beast that ran amok in the movie Species. Call it coincidence or call it invention of a legend. But just weeks before she spotted a strange creature beside her driveway, Madeline Tolentino admitted she sat in a movie theater and watched the science fiction thriller, Species. Ben Radford interviewed Madeline Tolentino. I think she genuinely believes that she saw this. I, I, I don't think she's a hoaxer. I don't think she's a liar. I think that she simply confused a monster that she saw in a film with real life. Radford calls Tolentino's story dubious, nonsensical, and contradictory. Scary monster stories never really die. They just get, well, scarier. And that's certainly true in the case of the chupacabra. You see, out here, legendary tall tales are just part of our Western lore. Even though the creature Tolentino described was never seen again, chupacabra hysteria has gone global. That chupacabra wants to eat that gold. People write songs about the chupacabra. There's chupacabra figurines. There's chupacabra board games. There are people who spend their lives looking for the chupacabra. Today you hear about chupacabra sightings all the time. When the carcass of a dead fish was found on Albuquerque's west side, some speculated it was the blood-sucking monster. In the last 10 years, chupacabra just means anything weird. It means some dead animal of some sort that we can't identify. Find a diseased dog or coyote and you'll find someone who says it's chupacabra. However, in every case, DNA tests show these strange dead creatures are just dead animals. The media had, an, had a very, very active role in promoting the, the chupacabra lore and still does to this day. I mean, 
uh, hardly a year goes by when someone doesn't find some, some dead dog somewhere in Texas and calls it the chupacabra until the tests come in. Radford calls it the beast that never was, yet the myth continues. Aren't you a bit of a spoiler? Come on. I don't think so. You have this creature that's so well known all around the world, this vampire creature, and to be able to definitively solve it, to, to sort of encapsulate it and say, this is all the elements to it, I think it is more fascinating than the myth. Despite the evidence, there is still a part in all of us that wants to believe in an elusive, blood-sucking vampire beast that lurks in the shadows. I would say it is no more or no less as real as Santa Claus. The Chupacabra is dead. Long live the Chupacabra. Larry Barker, KRQE News 13.